Hello, and welcome to Physician Spotlights. I am your host, Dr. Jay Patel. Physician Spotlights is a forum to learn more about our outstanding physicians in the field of nutrition and discuss important topics and ideas. With the help of Aspen, we are bringing these videos to you today. Our guest today is Dr. Sarah Bonus. Dr. Bonus is an Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of General Internal Medicine at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. She is a gifted educator and expert in home parental nutrition. I'm excited to have her here with us today. Dr. B Bonus, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Patel. Dr. Bonus, you know, I'd like to start by asking you, I, well, maybe make a statement first. I, I understand that you did some undergraduate work in, in nutrition. Can you please tell us sort of how that, that spark was maintained um, as you entered medical school and definitely um, when you became faculty at Mayo Clinic? Thanks, Jay. You know, it's been an interesting and I feel a very fortunate opportunity. My interest in nutrition did start early on, and I was trying to decide what aspect I wanted to address. And so my undergraduate degree was really kind of pluripotent. I could have gone to medical school or I was just a few credit hours short of a, the RD requirements or other things. I did get a, an experience in the clinic hospital cafeteria as a diet aide, first of all, and enjoyed that patient um, care aspect of things. I worked then for a year in a bariatric clinic while I was also teaching anatomy at K-State, um, but then decided I really liked that direct patient interaction and thought I would pursue medical school. During medical school, the opportunities were a lot more limited to stay involved with nutrition, but was able to do some educational sessions with local schools on a healthy lifestyle uh, and, and some of those aspects there. I also, my experience as uh, an intern at the County Extension Agency in Kansas was a great opportunity to do some cooking shows and work with the WIC program and get to learn a lot more about other aspects of practical nutrition. After completing medical school, I came up here to Mayo for my internal medicine residency. And again, during residency, there's some limited options, but I was fortunate to connect with Dr. Ryan Hurt, associated with Aspen, as well as a few other faculty here that have a strong interest in nutrition. So when I joined the faculty practice here, an opportunity opened up for me to join working with our home parental nutrition patient program and have been fortunate to continue to work with that for pretty much the whole time that I've been on staff. Um, as a general internist though, nutrition is pervasive in my practice. We see so many diseases where nutrition is really a key component in the management or honestly the onset of the disease. And so I feel that that nutrition background has been broad and varied and led me to a lot of different opportunities that I wouldn't have otherwise had had I not had that training. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. You've had quite a breadth of experience, you know, throughout your career. Can you share with us um, what mentorship has meant for you and how it shaped, you know, each step of the way and even now? I, I think that is a part that we frequently forget about as we go through this all. And, and early in my career is your just investigating what you want to do. My father is a physician, so I knew a little bit about that, but working in the hospital cafeteria and taking some of those introductory courses, you get to learn more about other aspects and, and talking with the, the faculty and college and just the other opportunities there was really helpful to get to know about those different aspects and get others insights into what are your strengths and weaknesses and where do you maybe fit into this all? Because sometimes where we think our passion lies, the reality is that maybe that's not actually what that role does. And so we need to rethink about that. Um, so mentorship, I think, has been key throughout this process as we learn what are, or as I have learned, what are my strengths and opportunities and where do my dreams fit with reality? Um, so I really have appreciated that guidance and that input and the positive feedback as well as the, the insights for where I can grow. Um, but I have really enjoyed the partnership, not only the mentorship, but the partnership with these faculty, as well as the opportunities that it's allowed me to develop relationships with pharmacists and dietitians and researchers and, and those other roles so that I feel like I have a bit better appreciation for those different um, colleagues and what all they work with on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Yeah, no, mentorship 
is something that certainly opens doors, but I wholeheartedly agree that it's also an opportunity to, you know, set and, and manage, you know, expectations. Why don't we change gears a little bit? Can you tell us a little bit about the work you're doing in the home parental nutrition space? Yeah, so we at Mayo have over 100 patients we manage across the U.S. that are on long-term home parental nutrition. And so it's been a unique opportunity to develop some long-term relationships with these patients, but really providing distant care for a lot of them because they live in a variety of places. But those connections and getting to know them and helping them live fulfilling successful lives, even with the health issues that they've had that many times folks feel is insurmountable, has been really rewarding. We've seen I guess I haven't seen families start, but I've seen kids with patients with, with families or who've had families shortly after their, their diagnosis or their need for parenteral nutrition and incorporating this into a regular part of an everyday life so that folks can feel quote unquote normal again is incredibly rewarding. We also see folks at the end of life and, and that is always a challenge, but the relationships that we've developed with families and the support that we've been able to provide through this, as well as that continuity, I think has been huge. Our patients have really valued some of the advocacy groups through Aspen or the Oli Foundation as well. Certainly our team does not work alone in this, um, but appreciate the broad network that Aspen has really worked to develop for opportunities for these patients, as well as the connections that we as providers have been able to develop. Um, so you have a patient in Wisconsin or Kentucky or somewhere else and you need to connect with someone, Aspen's been great to network with faculty so that we can help make some of those connections and facilitate those transitions of care or finding a local provider, which has really made things a lot smoother for some of our patients. Yeah, no, that's, that's wonderful to hear. You know, as an intensivist, you know, my patients um, are seen by me and, and my team, you know, a few days, maybe a week, but I really admire the longitudinal, you know, care that you provide to the PN patients. And along those lines, what advice would you have for others who are taking care of home PN patients and some of the challenges that they face? You know, how can you use your experience to perhaps impart a little wisdom uh, for those individuals? And it's, I, I smile because I think about wisdom and I think I'm still learning so much every day that I, I don't know that I have that wisdom necessarily to impart. I just got off the a visit with a patient that we're struggling to manage, you know, some of these, these challenges that they're facing. Um, I think one of the best things is don't be afraid to reach out. You know, um, we want to feel, I think, especially as physicians that we can manage it. We've gone to so much school, um, but there are questions I don't know the answer to, and it's been really great to collaborate with folks and reach out and, you know, hey, I tried this for so-and-so, what would you think about that? Or maybe we could try this instead. I, I think also a great team has been key for us. I feel very fortunate that we have a pharmacist and nurses and dietitians that we work with on a regular basis. Um, and so a strong relationship with your infusion company partners or some other team at your institution to really help because we as physicians don't have expertise in all of the different things that these team members have expertise in. And so our dietitians and the diet advice that they can provide has been, you know, incredible. And some of these unusual vitamin or mineral deficiencies and what dose and making up a regimen for these patients, our pharmacist has been fantastic. What's compatible, everybody wants to know what they can put in the TPN and which medications are compatible. Um, so it's helpful to have her answer those um, or assist with some of those questions and the training that our nurses provide as well as that really cornerstone of that longitudinal relationship and the follow-up with these patients. It really does take a team. And I think part of that team for us has, or for me has been Aspen and knowing who you can reach out to with some of those questions. Yeah, no, that's some very sage advice that you provide there. And, you know, I would agree that Aspen certainly is the glue that allows for that multiple disciplinary team to stick together. And before we wrap up here, Dr. Bonus, can you please share with us what kind of questions are you and your team asking? And what kind of questions do you think we should be asking as we look to the future? And every day, I think, brings a new questions. The bigger questions that we're, we're focusing on, 
it, there are so many complications or risks associated with PN, and we do worry about the long-term safety. And we provide care for patients who've been on it for 30, 40 years now. And how can we continue to provide PN safely and avoid some of the complications that we know about, the liver disease, the infection risk, the blood sugar and electrolyte issues. And um, so looking at a lot of those things and new lipid oils or safer profiles, how can we manage some of those risks in these folks uh, have been some of the key factors that we have looked at here. We're starting to see more patients probably with more advanced malignancies. And so what is the role of PN in some of these more advanced malignancies? And how do we make that transition with chemotherapy and more intense end of life cares? Uh, better for our patients? And how do we work to make sure that we're improving quality of life as well as potentially quantity of life and help facilitate some of those discussions as well? Uh, short bowel syndrome and the challenges that those patients face with the uh, ongoing high output and dietary changes and complications is another area where our team continues to try to work with folks and managing diarrhea. You know, um, just whatever we can do to make life a little bit more normal and a little less complicated for these folks or what we're continuing to try to partner with patients and, and others to work on. Yeah, I know that patient-centered approach is, you know, amazing. And it's something that only your patients stand to, to benefit, you know, with all the work that you're doing. With that, I'd like to thank Dr. Bonus for joining us and for sharing her insights with us. I would also like to thank Aspen and their partnership for this wonderful forum. Thank you for joining us today. Have a wonderful day or night, no matter where you are. Thank you, Dr. Monas. Thank you.